difficulty there trying to not have people not we don't want to alienate people mm -hmm. if they find out that if they come looking for that certain thing that they gave us and we don't have it anymore mm -hmm. um, we have to be able to explain why we don't have it mm -hmm. and so I think it, everything everything has its place but there's some things that Clinton is not their place mm -hmm. but we don't want to throw it in a wastebasket yeah <laughs> so it gets to be kind of you're not emotional with the, maybe the family but with just the object Mm -hmm. Knowing that they gave it to you, you just don't want to. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jo Joyce and June sought our advice on how to best deal with collection, organization, preservation, and preservation of their growing collection. Donors literally dump truckloads of paper filled rubber made tubs off of the door. Often the owners had passed away or moved to a nursing home, and their children couldn't bear to throw it away but had nowhere else to put it. They even described how they literally went through a semi-trailer full of one woman's records, trying to determine what was worth keeping. Value is not inherent in records, and for their own sanity and to the benefit of the broader society, they need to come up with their own methods for assessing value within the context and knowledge structure of their community. To do this, they must take on a participatory approach to appraisal, arrangement, and description. The community members are the experts with the most knowledge of their history, so they should be the ones to determine what is selected and why as well as how the relationships between records are represented within the collection. Mm -hmm. Another area where they sought our advice was with issues of preservation. Most of the records in Joyce's basement are organized well and housed in archival folders, but the environmental conditions of the storage unit are very unstable, leaving the collection extremely vulnerable to past rapid deterioration and mold growth that can be devastating to their paper-based items. And although it's tempting to suggest that these collections be transferred to a larger institution, with the resources to care for them, it is essential that these materials remain in the community. The short clip from June, er, sorry, this is the short clip from June and Joyce's <coughs> response to my question of whether they ever considered transferring their collection to somewhere like WHS, and it demonstrates their thoughts on the matter. Sure. I think we get shot. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> I think that, that Clinton, being a small community, even though we're part of more communities than mm -hmm. just Clinton. I think that they would not donate things to us if they it's thought it yeah. was going to leave the area. Physical ownership empowers the community by giving them the feeling that they're responsible for keeping their own history. Um, not only would they lose ownership of the physical collection, they would lose ownership over how it is intellectually interpreted. When transferred to a mainstream institution and interpreted by an archivist, an item loses a great deal of contextual and cultural significance because the narrative of the item is embedded in the local cultures that surround it. Therefore, when an item is removed from its home community, from its home within a community, and transplanted to a new home in an archival repository, it becomes impossible to understand the richness and complexity of its life as situated within that community. Although they had noble intentions and a great deal of knowledge about and passion for the history of the community, it would benefit them greatly to have an individual well-versed in archival theory and practice to assist them with the preservation of the physical archives the integrity of the records. In this way, archivists can assist these communities by working alongside rather than on behalf of them. This is an opportunity not only for professional archivists, but for graduate students in archival programs to take on education and outreach, holding principles of archiving seminars and archives 101 workshops within the community. Students could be placed with a community based in community-based archive in fulfillment of an internship or practicum requirement. This would benefit the community while providing a way for students and professionals to get hands-on experience in non-traditional archival settings. This study of the archives of the Clinton community exposes the current need for archival professionals and custodians of community-based archives to work together to preserve the collections that exist outside the walls of the mainstream archival institutions. Archivists' willingness to collaborate will become an enduring strength for the profession leading to increased visibility and value to society, and a return to their former status as essential contributors to the vitality and strength of all humanity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did you first get hooked up with uh, the, these two women in Clinton, and will you share your paper with them? I, I have already. and. Um, I initially, I went and did the, the oral histories 
and then I met Ron, and I really wanted to do historic preservation, so I started going back and helping them like tear down walls and peel wallpaper and just do heavy labor stuff. And um, Dana came with me, and they asked us to look at their archives. And then we went to lunch, and I like sent this huge over like they were just joyous. The one woman was just overwhelmed and kept asking us, and she really, really. Um, took to heart what we were telling her. She was right taking notes when we were talking and just really wanted to learn like everything she could from us. And like every time I go back, they're they're just so open and they just you can tell that they really love their history and they just really want to do good by it. Great. Thank you.